in different roles in different fields and is currently the CEO of Integrify that trains talented immigrants coder by providing them boot camps. And besides software development, the students who are studying at Integrify also have a chance to learn teamwork and communication skills. Uh, basically, they learn all of the necessary skills uh, to get ready for the job. And as a CEO, he has a very great interest in growth creation, new technologies, and impactful entrepreneurship. So um, thanks a lot for being here today as well, Annette Daniel. Yeah, I think you're amusing. <laughs> Classic. Uh, thank you very much and good morning. Yeah. Okay. So um, I would like to once again, thanks a lot for being here today with us, Mariam and Daniel. And uh, so how are you doing today? We can start with Mariam. <laughs> doing well, thanks a lot. Yeah. And Daniel, are you doing well? Yeah, looking out of my window, it's a very rainy and, and gray day, but, but otherwise, otherwise very good. I hope the panel discussion will add your, your yeah. mood up a little bit. Very well. Okay, and so, um, so the first question I want to ask you, and I think the audience is very curious as well, is that what does the leadership mean to you? So, Mariam, feel free to start. Yeah, can you hear me? <laughs> okay, sure. Standard. Um, so yeah, I think I think it's a um, it's a difficult question in 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 a sense because I, I think everyone understands it differently. And until you really, really start leading a team and start working with other people, it really is just kind of more keywords rather than really your understanding. Um, to me, um, leadership really means just being able to work with others, having really great communication skills, being able to also get uh, really like give away and, and uh, delegate most of your job because that is what what most leaders will do and that's that that is especially very difficult from someone who is coming from a let's say technical background who usually the engineers would be promoted to become leaders of their teams right and usually without really prior education without really prior kind of knowledge it's really really hard because most of the engineers are very handsome and i think that that has been one of the very key learnings for me how to really kind of delegate how to make sure that I'm not the one really doing all the job and instead just make an environment where everyone else can work, can feel safe and, and really contribute. So that's, I think that's the hardest part to, uh, to really be in a position where you actually do not kind of delegate most of your work and just make sure that you create an environment where the other people can be productive. Yeah, okay. That's actually a very, very amazing answer. And, and how about you, Daniel? Uh well, to me, leadership is something that uh, my personal take on, on, on the matter has evolved a lot through the, through the years. So maybe what I thought about leadership five years ago is very different than I, what, what I think about it uh, today. And, and I think it has evolved from something rather simple to, to more and more complex and, and back to something more and more uh, simple again, again today. <clears throat> what I mean by simple is, is that, you know, it's, it's, uh, to me, leadership is about getting something done or something's done and get, getting other people to join that mission or, or vision or task or, or, or objective. Even though it, it might be simple to say, it's, it's in reality a very complex and, and a hard and a multifaceted thing. So while some, something can be uh, simple to understand or simple concept, it doesn't mean it's easy or, or uh, kind of like... Uh, uh, easy in practice so uh, it's it's something that maybe I struggle with every day and every day I think about it from from some perspective so it's very much uh, present uh, in in the way people work today and and uh, in the way we work at at our company but it's it's uh, something mostly to me uh, doing with getting things done and and getting other people to join uh, that that thing that you're trying to to achieve. Yeah, thanks a lot, Daniel. And our, so in your opinion, um, what is the main difference uh, between, you know, management and leadership? I think, I think in today's world, uh, 
mostly like all the books, everything, like all the articles would mostly talk about leadership because I think management, well, management and leadership, the difference, main difference is that leaders are trying to lead and kind of exactly as uh, Daniel mentioned, create an environment where people understand the mission and the vision behind why they do things. And I think for most of the people, it's very, very important to understand why they do something instead of just following blindly. And um, management more is kind of um, more tasks kind of uh, similar to micromanagement or similar to like there are similar specific tasks. These are the tasks, just pick something, each person picks something and then they, they finish their tasks. And it's more like um, something is just, just given to you and you have to do your work. Um, so leadership is more towards instead instead kind of driving people and leading them towards a specific mission and instead allowing them to do the job and really empowering and making the uh, making it possible uh, yeah to me to me that's kind of maybe I didn't describe in in the like best best really words but management uh, I think I think to, in today's world again um, you wouldn't really see if you have a manager especially in like more tech type of companies like people really are very skeptical around um just doing something they want to really understand the reason behind what they why they do things okay so um before we uh you know like we come to daniel uh then i would like to you know ask a uh, very like follow-up questions for, for you mariam uh is that like uh, how you make sure that people will understand the vision at the beginning when they start working in your in your workplace yeah i think i think the uh, so let's say there is there is a specific um topic where you want to drive them towards or help them understand i mean the b biggest reason for them to would before starting to do anything would be to understand why they do things why why something matters and why you want to you want to do go direction one instead of direction two and i think the way to explain and to really kind of bring them on board would be to really help them understand the reasons why overall the company is moving towards that direction what's the business what's the reason behind what why the business has to go towards this way or the other way like using maybe using KPIs or using explain, explaining it uh, with kind of customer examples. So let's say if the company wants to do project A instead of project two, uh, there needs to be also good reasons why, right? It's not just someone just selected that. So um, it's either um, just, just explaining really the reasons and the thinking behind. So people understand, uh, okay, there is a, there is a reason um, the company wants to move towards this direction. And, um, being clear on kind of priorities and being clear on expectations as well. So I think that's also very important um, to understand that it's not just just a project we are doing, but rather there is specific expectations also for our, from our customers and from the company that this something something has to be done uh, in that regard. And uh, yeah, those those key components have to be have to be really clear uh, by the people going going to the to the specific direction. I think that's very, very nice to hear. And some of us here will, you know, like um, uh, get the, the, the experience from you. And then like, we would try to, you know, like um, apply in our operations or, or something like that. But I also want to, to hear the opinion on, on this question from Daniels as well. So, yeah. Yeah, thanks. I think uh, it was very good what, what Marianne said. I think to, to build a little bit on that, I think management is is more or i could simplify it so that management is is about tasks while leadership is about people so uh maybe maybe that's how i, I would i would summarize it uh man like as as mariam said you want to get something done and and you have some sort of a context this task or or tasks but uh and and people have to kind of like i think with a management, people have to do something or they're obliged to do something. Whereas in leadership, it's something that people want to do. So I think there's a big, big difference in, in, in these two. And, and you can uh, get promoted to be a, a manager, for example, but leadership is something that you kind of like earn or, or you become a leader because other people in a way let you become a leader. 
So, so nobody can promote you to, a, or, or, I mean, you can just get a title leader from, from somewhere, but it's something that other people actually, in fact, uh, people you work with, uh, in, a, in a sense, give you. Yeah, I can just echo that as well, exactly, as Daniel said, uh, leadership is earned and um, I mean, you might be, uh, might earn it within your team and then be promoted, that's, uh, that's also possible, but exactly, that is something that people, people really kind of recognize um, someone within their teams, within their department as someone they kind of look after who is becoming the role model and that's kind of naturally evolving. And then, yeah, maybe, I mean, they could promote it or not, but that's a different question. Yeah, so far it's, 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 it's very valuable and also like very uh, informative to, to, to our audience to, you know, like maybe adapt the experience from, from you guys to, to our operations, lab, as I just mentioned. And also, I want to, you know, like ask you a little bit um, about like, what can the leader do, like specifically, like giving the example to help, you know, like others in organization see the future of the, of the companies. So what you usually do to help them to see it. Maybe we can start, yeah. Miriam, yeah. Yes, I can start. Um, yeah, I think um, it's a difficult question. Um, so uh, I think first of all, the leader has to really also explain and kind of set a context of where the company comes from. Also, what's like what's what has happened in the past. Maybe some things uh, that are very important to to set as a context and understand the limitations as well. So let's say there are some decisions which you could make, uh, which is more beneficial to the team or to the department, but to some extent there are limitations as well because, because of different reasons. Um, and also really to explain kind of what, where the, what the future holds. So what's, what's the plan if we do this, what's gonna happen? What's, what's expected in the future? What's really, yeah, why, why we do this in the first place again, similarly. Um, so also if, if, we, if we talk about not only like specific projects, but even related to people development, et cetera, I think it's very important to explain the people and to help them see where they can be in a year, in two years time, what kind of goals are, whether it's towards company or towards a person that they can achieve within this one, two years and understand why and, and make sure, and also kind of help people get excited about the journey because I think once if the people are not really excited they just do it like tasks like they have to do there has to be some kind of motivation for them as well even though my belief is that you can't uh, artificially motivate people if they are not like intrinsically motivated to some extent but you can help them build confidence and help them really with their they might have some motivation but you can really build up on that and help them to to be more motivated to do to, to go through the journey with you. That's very interesting. And how about you, Daniel? Uh, well, um, it's a good question. Like if you think about how, how to help others see the, see the future, especially in like a crazy year, like, like this has, has been, uh, where basically in the beginning of the year, the whole world uh, went to a, to a halt in a, in a way. And in many ways, we lost all forward visibility. So, I mean, like what, what we thought the future holds, uh, let's say last year, dramatically changed uh, it quite, quite suddenly. So in a mat matter of months. And at, at least from the perspective here in, in, in Finland, uh, what we saw is that nobody really knew what is going on and what will happen in six months or one year or two years or, or, or five years. So uh, it's, it's very, very tricky. But I think uh, in this uh, question, as, as in many, many others as well, I think communication is key. So uh, you cannot emphasize how, how important that is, uh, how much you kind of like should and, and have to talk and, and try to communicate the, the message that you have or the vision that you have or the expectation that you have both, I would say, uh, internally within your team, but in also in some some cases also externally. So uh, you cannot really, 
communicate too too much and especially like let's say now in covid times where a lot of the work is being done remote and people don't meet each other so so much and maybe don't uh, kind of like be in the same same space as as they used to be so i i think these are kind of like the things that are now highlighted more and more so i i think like in many many other uh, issues the, the the communication is is the key to kind of like help the organization see the see the future and have the same vision that's very nice and and very very valuable to us and um i have like um i have seen some of the questions from our audience and i think like they're very excited to you know like hear your answer and thoughts on this as well and so, um, so do you have any advice for the first time entrepreneur and how you can really practice the leadership skills when, you know, like they have not done any leading role before? So we can start with Daniel. Uh, well, I mean, doing anything for the first time is, is very hard and you will fail. But I think that's just the process of learning and, and doing something. Uh, it, it doesn't mean that, you know, if you fail, that you're a failure. It just means that you just keep on doing it and try to get better and, and, and kind of like learn from the, from the experience. Uh, I think it's just a nat natural process of, of doing something for the, for the first time. I mean, there are many things that you can uh, do in a way to help you prepare for, for the situation, I think. Uh, what I personally do is I, I, I read a lot. Uh, I try to read a lot on, on different kind of like uh, topics, not only about, you know, purely, let's say, le leadership or, or management, but also kind of like psychology and, and, and I try to understand kind of like people and, and that sort of, sort of stuff. There's a ton of very, very good literature on, on any topic that you can, you can find. Uh, the other thing is that uh, personally, I try to learn from from peers, from other people have, that have done the same thing. They might be in a very similar uh, situation within their their teams or organizations, or they might be like super senior, where people who have done it like for for decades and and can really share insight and and kind of like their learning experience and and so on. So you don't have to learn ev everything, you know, the hard way, but you can. You can try to maximize your learning from from other people, from books or or uh, wherever. But in a, in a sense, it's kind of like this sort of a thing that you can study how you know how to swim as much as you want, and you can read books and you can watch videos about how how to swim. But the only thing that will you know teach you how to swim is to get get to the water and and, and try to survive. So, so I think in a sense, it's this sort of a, sort of a thing. So coming back to that, probably the first point is that it's just something that you have to do and then you will fail, but then hopefully you will learn and, and keep gradually getting better and better in, in this thing. Yeah, and, and we also like really want to hear your opinion on this as well, Miriam. Yeah, I completely echo what Daniel said. Uh, definitely learning, learning in terms of yeah, reading, understanding how others have done, is definitely um, important because you have to have at least some kind of basis uh, for yourself um, to start with. And I think what's also important is really to to be open and to be really accepting that yes, I mean you don't know everything as well, and um, you are not there to know everything, and be open to and willing to hear others' opinions and for them also to see that you are, um, you are um, what's the right English word? Basically that you are open for feedback, whether something works out, something doesn't, that you want to hear their opinion, uh, that you also do not think that any, everything you say is going to be right. So it's also something that you both, like both sides, just try out, work together and figure it out. Um, the, was the question, question mainly around kind of team building? I'm just looking, looking on the question and answer section. Or was it the startup? Startup. Um, startup uh, no worries at all. So um, it's it just like we will pick like, um, I tried okay. to come up with some of the questions here. So yeah, at all. I think it's also very useful, um, like as a first time 
leader again i mean it has been also pretty difficult for me for especially like the delegation part and there are some other parts that you just learn by doing you really um, you can read a lot but you just have to have to do it yourself and learn on your mistakes i think that's that's definitely going to be there so don't be discouraged if if something doesn't work out it's just going to be yeah you're going to be better becoming better every time every next time uh, over and over and just being open for feedback and asking for feedback whether it's from your peers or from your um, people you manage I think that's very important to to hear them to understand their thoughts and why they think something is right or not right not and then really understand how you can improve going forward I think it's just yeah again learning and failure yeah so we can you know like learn from the experience from those are amazing leaders is that like learning by doing is very important and there might be you know some failure but you learn from it and you keep doing that and that's just very amazing to to listen to those uh, answer uh, from you guys and um so the next question is uh specifically for uh daniel so our uh, there's a question from audience uh, i imagine that your team is very multicultural and is there anything interesting you learn while managing the team? Uh, managing a multicultural team. Yeah, uh, at, at Integrify today, we have around 15, 15 team members. And we, we have people from uh, Finland. We have people from uh, Russia. We have people from uh, Nepal, we have people from uh, Syria, we have people from uh, Vietnam, quite a few actually from, from uh, Vietnam, as you might know. Uh, so, so it's a very diverse uh, group of, of, of people coming from different culture, coming from different kind of like uh, ways to communicate, coming from like very different uh, just, you know, places. So obviously in the, in the beginning, it was quite hard to get people people uh, to kind of like just talk the same language to, to so, so, so to say but but then again people are not that different like we all come from a fairly similar background um, with a university background studying business or technology or or these sort of things that are quite similar in in uh, any country or location so even though there are things that uh, make us you know different in a way there are so many things that make us very 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 similar so i think these are just kind of like things that you have to grow grow into but i don't think we have had really major issues or or problems with this sort of a thing that people come from different different uh places and have kind of like different backgrounds i think it's a thing that you develop some sort of a like every organization develops or has some sort of a culture and it's about to me at least trying to build build a culture that everybody can uh sign off on and 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 join and participate and then you kind of like lead that culture and build that culture and and it doesn't matter really where you come from or what your background is when people kind of like want to follow that the the, the culture and, and work in that sort of a setting so I think I think you know it mostly has to do with with building a culture that people want to join and and understand and then uh, be be present. That's nice to hear. Uh, and so like um, from from what Daniel just say, we can you know like take out some of the tips to you know apply it to the team instead of like, be presentable and also like try to build a, a culture for for the companies for for everyone to join. And that's very nice to hear. And also for Mariam, um, as someone who has a very strong technical background, and what are the challenges you face when you become the CEO? Yeah, there are so many. <laughs> I think um, the important part before, I mean, um, in the beginning, um, yeah, I kind of, the, the good thing that I had as a background was that I had a leadership background. So I, I did work on more high, high level um, topics. I did work with other departments uh, alongside like sales marketing. So I had a high level overview of all of the kind of overall the product and the company vision and direction and like how to work with others. I think that helped a lot. Um, on the other hand, however, it's, it's still very difficult. It has been, especially in the beginning, very difficult because 
as a technical person, usually you um, you have never worked as in, in sales or you have never done really customer conversations. You have never you, you have never done sales. So I think as an engineer, especially once wor as working someone as an engineer, you you most of the time you really just think about the project you are working on, the product you are building, and mostly you think that the company, the entire company depends on engineering department because you know that's that's where the product is produced, right? That's where uh, where you really produce something and if it's not there, then customers are not gonna buy anything, which which is to some extent true. But once I, uh, I really started working on more high level with, with all of these other topics, I just realized that the business itself in order something to become a business is very very dependent on all of these aspects so it's also like sales customer conversations marketing all of this like everything has its piece in in really in the puzzle because if you do not talk to customers then you just don't know what to build or you don't build the right thing if you are not good at sales you are not able to kind of attract your customers and explain them why they should buy your solution if you are not good at marketing you have a solution which is great, which works fine, but then you are not able to to uh, to promote it or somehow attract customers. Yeah, I think I, I think those are there's lots of learnings you you I got at least personally once I started doing all of this. And um, I think the again the key differentiation is once before before really becoming a CEO, you just think on the technical side, lots of things are happening around technology, which is not not really the case. <laughs> that every every aspect of the of the business is equally important and every every job itself is equally important it's a different question if one job might be much easier the other one might be a bit more complex etc but in terms of really moving the business forward and making it successful all of these aspects are really important yeah that's that's very nice to hear um like as a leader after you know like the business then we have to you know like always taking care of the employees and also take into the considerations all aspects that can uh, you know influence the team and that is very very nice to hear and also like the challenges that you face and you learn from it as well so that would be very very valuable to to some of us here and uh, also i wanna um like talk a little bit about the just uh, in the workplace, as you already know, as a leader, um, like building trust in the workplace is very, very important. And by creating the environment um, of trust and safety, and and you know, like a very, um, you know, motivational workplace for people to work, um, it's just more likely that the employees will be committed um, to reaching their peak potential. And so, how uh, as a leader, how you can like create the climate of trust and facilitate the relationships among the people in the team, in the work team. So we can, I can start. start. Yeah, I one. can start. <laughs> uh, I think, um, I mean, that is one of the core uh, parts of leadership, right? To really have trust and create trust within the team. Um, I think it's possible to achieve it by really, first of all, being transparent of uh, all of the topics that either you are bringing to the team or within within the department, within the team you're working on. Um, just having transparency around why some things happen, why some things are, why decisions are made this or that way. I think that's very important. Um, and helping people to, again, feel in safe environment. So understanding that if they do something, which is if they do not succeed or something fails, then that's okay and um, creating an environment within the team where they are they're fine to try and to to kind of try fail and then try something else um, for that i mean there are lots of different ways to achieve it by setting up kind of feedback uh, loops feedback me feedback mechanism or or uh, retrospective type of um, meetings where where you try to understand when something fails as a company as an organization or team you just try to understand why something fell felt what were the reasons and then how you overcome it next time instead of like having a blame culture i think that's very important to to exactly not have the blame culture but rather the vice versa and um yeah i think uh, providing feedback regularly also would help to eliminate uh, becoming being at a place later on where something fails and you have no clue why or the people didn't feel comfortable talking to you or explaining the reasons in between while they're while they're um, they were in the journey. So I think also um, 
setting up feedback mechanisms, whether it's one-on-ones or whether it's like across team team meetings to share feedback with each other as retrospectives. I think those are good mechanisms to for people to be on the same on the same um, kind of level and on the same understanding of where they are going. And if something goes um, not so so much as expected, then you have you know that earlier, and then you try to prevent that or change the direction, change the yeah, course of the journey to adapt that instead of waiting for a month and then some something or someone fails and then you try to understand okay why it failed in after a month. So that's is very very nice to hear. Um, like uh, just to recap is that um, so as uh, you know like how to facilitate the the trust and also like um, motivate people to work is that like we need to you know like create opportunity be for people to to try it out and to get failure and then like they learn how to overcome it and also like um, have a team meeting to make sure everyone is like uh, on the same page of what are going on. That's very nice to listen to. And how about you, Daniel? Mm, yeah, I think this is a, a super important question and also kind of like very complex topic in a way. Uh, in, in a way, it's quite simple. I mean, trust is something that you develop over a period of time. It just does not happen over time or, uh, I mean, overnight or, or in a day or two, but kind of like over over time. And you have to work hard to develop uh, the, the tr trust, whether it's a, any sort of uh, relationship in the in the in the workplace or wherever, and it can be lost very fast. So uh, I think, uh, especially kind of like how to build trust in an organization or a, or a company or so on with the with the teammates and so on. Uh, one way to to do that, I think, is to kind of like have people have very clear goals. Uh, on what we want to achieve and also like what are the personal goals for uh, any, any uh, individual. So by communicating and trying to kind of like uh, crystallize that as, as, as good as you can, uh, it's easier to kind of like find ways on how, to, how you want to achieve that. And if you, don't, if you don't achieve it for some reason, it's easy also to ask for help and kind of like see uh, another path to, to find that or realize the goal. So it, it's something that you kind of like have to work on every single day in a way and people are different. So there is no like one solution that, that fits, fits all people and, and they have different expectations and different kind of like ideas about, about trust. But again, like in many other things, I think it's about communication. So you cannot do that too much you cannot overdo it but just kind of like clearly trying to communicate and understand each other uh, is is a way to develop trust in my opinion yeah so like having a clear goals and able to you know like that person is able to ask for support is very important in in daniel's uh, perception and so i also want to know a little bit like um, how you can monitor the performance of the team so Daniel, feel free to start. Yeah, well, uh, in in our company, we use the OKR system. So I'm not sure if you're uh, familiar with it, but basic, basically just having a kind of like company-wide objective uh, or objectives for a year or, or quarter and so on. And then uh, divide, deriving those into key results or like things that we want to uh, achieve and then having people that are responsible for, or first of all, have teams that are responsible for the for the uh, objectives and, and results, and then within team uh, specific individuals. So that's at least how we do it in our our company, and we kind of like uh, have uh, or spend a lot of time every quarter planning the the next quarter and the the, the one after that, and also kind of like doing retrospectives on on how we did uh, in the in the past uh, past uh, quarter so th this is how we do it in our, our our company there are roles where it's a lot easier to uh, monitor the performance for example like sales sales is quite uh, easy like it's about activities and 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 results but not all roles are like like sales i think sales is the most like easiest thing to kind of like you know in a way monitor 
but how do you monitor like for example something related to hr or how do you how do you monitor something related to uh building a product that gets more complex than you anticipated or how do you how do you monitor something that you know happens that has not no or or you don't have uh power to to kind of like uh easily work on let's say a new competitor shows up and completely changes the game or let, let's say covid comes and completely changes the game so i think in a way you you develop this sort of a performance metrics on, on people and what you kind of like want to achieve and and then also again communicate very clearly about what the what the targets are and make sure that you do retrospectives uh, and you kind of like assess what really happened and 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 what can you do uh, going forward but it really depends on the team on the role on the task uh, it's it again it's not like a one one solution fits all but this is at least how we do it in our our company That's, that's very nice to hear. And um, if you remember at the very beginning, I asked uh, the audience to give the opinion on their question. Uh, in their opinion, what is the trait of the good leader? And so we really, really want to hear it from you as the leaders. Um, so like, do the leader have to be extroverted or, or, you know, like very passionate, very visionary in the group? And then like, what are the common characteristics of the typical successful leader? So feel free to answer it. Uh, well, I think it's con about conviction. Like you have to believe in the thing that you're doing. And, and if you don't believe in the thing that you're doing, uh, it's very hard to get other people to believe in, in that sort of thing. So while there can be many, many uh, different traits to, to a leader, I don't think it comes down to being extroverted or introverted or, or that, that, that sort of thing. You can be, you know, either or or something in the, in, in the middle. It doesn't have to necessarily be, be uh, characterized as, as such. But I think the most important thing is, is kind of like conviction and, and uh, balancing on so, some sort of a thin line where you try to create a future that's you know, very visionary, uh, hard to achieve, but but also realistic, uh, so so that it's not demotivating. So that that's what I would say. Yeah, I I agree with what Daniel said, but also would add, um, I think it's very important to have empathy for the leader. Um, I think it came up with one of the answers. And um, to, be, to have empathy, to understand others, to really understand why others do something in, in one way or the other, because I don't know, there are lots of reasons why people are misbehaving or mis, uh, underperforming, etc. cetera. Um, to be also decisive, uh, I think that's very important as well, because if the leader isn't able to decide on something, even though the decision might be good or bad, uh, at that point, of course, obviously, the leader wants to, to do their best to um, for the next round, I mean, for the next days or months or years. But at that point, it might be a right decision. In the next month, it might be a wrong decision. You never know. However, I think the leader has to be really decisive, decisive, decisive because otherwise, just the everyone following the leader really isn't understanding why something is being done and where are they going that's i think that's really dangerous as well and um the third thing probably to be really good at communicating and as daniel mentioned once you have the vision etc but you have to somehow communicate this to your um to do, to your people they have to really understand why something happen happens and the why behind i think is very important so that 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 naturally comes through really being able to explain the reasons being able to um, explain and negotiate, not negotiate, but rather um, really align everyone on the same page. Yeah, I think I think those those to me are really important as well. Yeah, that's that's lovely. That's that's very informative to us. And also, I um, I think like some of our, our audience has a very interesting question for you. Uh, is that like? Um, what do you think about the salary competitiveness in your company to retain the talents? So as a startup, maybe you you have to face, you know, um, a very like a little bit more difficult for, for finance or something like that to, to, to 
uh, maintain our operation to run smoothly or effectively. Uh, but like uh, one of our uh, audience really curious about their salary competitiveness. So feel free to answer. I can maybe jump in. Um, I think I think you have as a leader, you have to be fair on that regard and not expect someone to not really have someone to live just because of salary, unless you are completely under, um, yeah, you don't have money to pay anything. But let's assume that it's a company that has enough money that can pay employees, right? And I think it's one, I mean, one thing that we have done is there have been several cases where we would try to hire engineers or product people, and those people would come from abroad and they were not aware of the salaries in the German market, for example. And usually, naturally, they, they expect to have less salary. But what we have done is really based on their level of skills and the market standard. We just have paid a market standard, which has been much higher than what they were expecting. On the other hand, we wanted to be fair because we didn't want the salary to be a question of discussion for, for the next year or something. Because once the people, because if it's, yeah, people are, People are people, right? They are gonna figure out, they, they are gonna know that what the market pays and what their other peers are getting. I think that's unfair for them to be in a position for some time and then to understand they have been underpaid. I think the question, salary question has to be really not completely gone out of the out of out of the discussion in the first place. And then the other topic would come if someone wants to leave, etc. Is looking in the reasons behind whether it's they don't feel comfortable within their job or they they they're not they're not feeling motivated by their project etc but i think again you have to make sure that you really pay equal for equal skills and knowledge and that question isn't at all a discussion i mean at least that's how how we have tried to do and and work worked nice for us because we have never had people bringing also from abroad or hiring and then people leaving within a year because just because their salary they figured out they could, could get higher salary especially in tech I think that that's very very easy to 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 get as a result. Yeah, I think that is a very good uh, strategy for you know like taking into the considerations uh, for the audience who asked the question and also other uh, you know manager or leader of the team as well. And also, I want to hear uh, your opinion as well, Daniel. Yeah, I think uh, you have to be fair and, and on par with kind of like on, on what the market is paying, right? So exactly like, like Mariam uh, mentioned. Uh, however, somebody said to me, like in, when I was in my early stages of my, my career, uh, when we were talking about this this sort of topic, they they somebody who was a lot older than me and very experienced and also successful, they asked me if I want to uh, maximize my learning or maximize my compensation or salary. So, do you want to learn or do you want to make money? So. I think for a person in their early early stages of career, m the most important thing is the the kind of like trajectory of your uh, experience and 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 learning. So the salary will, will follow. And in in my context, I've been working with startups. So uh, if you want to make money, don't work in a startup. Go work in a bank or I don't know somewhere else. Uh, they will always pay you pay you more and it's just a fact of life you know you have steady businesses that are established that have uh you know the resources and 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 they they can do that startups live in a very different reality like they're just trying to survive and trying to find product market fit and and you know you have a little of everything like you have you don't have that many uh resources and and let's also remember that you know these big companies that we admire they're not startups anymore like if you look at in Finland, you look at Volt or you look at, you know, Supercell or these sort of companies smartly, like the, the huge successful companies, they are not startups anymore. So they are scale-ups. So they also have, uh, you know, more resources to uh, offer uh, very, very good uh, salaries. But if you look at these sort of companies, the only thing the companies have are the people. So somehow you need to be able to con convince people to uh, join you and, and be in the team and, and stay in the team. So of course you need to pay the, the market, but you also want to attract people who not necessarily want to maximize their, their uh, you know, 
earnings in a short period of time, but rather like have people that want to grow, uh, learn, get experience and, and kind of like then after that, make the company so successful that, that everybody will, will be uh, earning better. So I, I think that's kind of like the most, most important thing in, in when you consider the, the compensation part. That's very nice to hear. And um, also like one of our audiences um, have a very specific example uh, how to do with this problems and they want to hear it from you is that uh, how do you deal with the ego centric people in your team? So we can start with Daniel. Yeah, it's a, it's a you know, it's a good, good question. Like a team has to perform as 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 a team, and uh, people need to be able to work with with each other. So, if if somebody has a huge ego or be, behaves like an asshole, you know, it's not very sustainable. So, you know, uh, we we have this sort of uh, images of like a hero person, like the number one, let's say, salesman who is bringing home the bacon and, and just overperforming and delivering all the time and then uh, things that they can get get away with by of being like an asshole because of that or you know developing a huge ego we have the same same sort of thing in tech like people think they're the uh, you know kings or, or or whatever very easily because they only look at what they are doing and and, and think that they are doing such a great uh, a job whereas maybe other people are also doing a great job in their 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 field so i think it's it's you know when people start developing an an, an ego it, it becomes very tricky because you cannot let uh, you cannot give exceptions on how you treat treat people so to me that one of the you know key traits or people that you want to work with are like humble people that are very hungry uh, in, in learning and, and doing what they do, but they like ego is very different. It's, it's, it's very difficult. Like, when that road, road crosses, it's very difficult to get back. So I think it will have a huge impact on the whole uh, team or whole company. So you just have to kill it as, as soon as, as, as you can, because nothing good will derive out of out of that so trying to talk with the person saying that you know it, it's not it's not fair it doesn't work you know it will have this and this and these implications and 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 kind of results so you know it's it just cannot have that yeah so we just heard the opinion from daniel and how about you Miriam? yeah i think it's a it's a really difficult tough situation but, but most of the themes are having that situation i think and to me that I mean, I have seen several cases like that, but I would say it also becomes really contagious for the whole team and potentially also a department or a company. And that also demotivates, really starts demotivating others in the team because um, like if others see unfair or different behavior and different um, uh, judgment from their leader towards this kind of uh, action or behavior, I think that's very contagious, very, very different very dangerous for the whole team. I think, um, yeah, I mean, first, of course, you have to try to understand why the person behaves that way, have kind of one-on-one -on -one conversations with them, really understand uh, wh whether it's just an ego or they are trying to say something uh, with their actions. If, yeah, if you figure out that's just like themselves because they think they are the best and they, um, they are, uh, yeah, they have to be treated differently, then I think it's a different conversation. Also, to this is something that also has to be brought up within the team. And I, I believe the team pressure, team pressure is really much, much higher than uh, the leader or the manager compress pressure. Um, I think that is something that can be discussed within the team as well, like in meetings like retrospectives, etc. It it can be brought up um, like openly and just being discussed that it disturbs other team members as well. And if that doesn't help as well, and the team still feels uh, that it's unfair and it's it's bothering themselves to do their work uh, in the right way, then I think that just has to be really handled um, from the HR level perspective because yeah, it's just it's just going to be becoming more and more contagious over time, 
um, and more uh, harm harmful to the team. Unless, unless the leader, yeah, the leader accepts that, but hopefully not. <laughs> Yeah, so and, and if, if uh, I may add, um, you know, what, what Mary has said, develop on that, it's like today's topic is leadership, right? So uh, leadership is not easy. And, you know, how do you deal with a situation like you have a key team member who is very good at what they do and the company needs that, that person? And then that person starts to develop an ego that has an effect on the whole team, just like Mariam said. So what do you do? there's no right answer like you know it very much depends on the situation and, and this sort of thing but but if you let you know give room to this sort of behavior it, it becomes very slippery slope and it might be very expensive for you to try to fix uh, especially if the culture starts to take take a hit uh, it's very difficult to kind of like get it to the right direction and it will take time and cost cost money so there's no right answer but but, but i think this is what leadership is about Maybe again, just to add on that, I think, yeah, I completely agree with what you said. And uh, one thing that might be helpful is, I think as a leader, you have to try to make sure that you eliminate single points of failures in your team or in an organization, because that usually happens when someone has more knowledge or more skills or more influence, influence in specific areas. And as a leader, you just have to make sure that your entire team is has like all of this knowledge everything that this person has that is related to their also specific person is really allocated and um yeah within the whole team within the entire team so whether let's say if i talk about technology if someone is an engineer and has has done work in all of this like knows all the product all the technical like code all of the code etc you just have to make sure that there is good documentation, there is good knowledge sharing within team members so that they do not become a bottleneck at some point because then it's gonna be also very dangerous for the company. If you, if the person leaves, then the company is basically gonna be, yeah, in, in a very difficult situation. I think that's leading to that. You have to just make sure you just don't, don't become, don't be at that stage later on. Yeah, that's, uh, you know, like, um, that's, that's very, very valuable to us. And I think like, we, we still have so many questions that I, I assume the audience is very into this topic. Uh, but unfortunately, we're running out of time. So I just, uh, I want to wrap it up. And um, uh, yeah, feel free to, to, uh, to, to ask more questions, and we will get back to you after the session. And thanks a lot. Like what we learned from the panel discussion today is that leader is a person who influences and encourages the group of people to work like towards the, the realization of goals and then the how much of the leadership is the capacities to influence others uh, towards the accomplished goal and towards the betterments as well. And so that's very, very meaningful and informative to us to, to listen to your experience and your thoughts on some, uh, you know, like uh, areas uh, when when you, you you lead the team and when you you know, run your business and I hope that uh, you guys have enjoyed the discussion so far and learn uh, something from our talented uh, and enthusiastic panelists and big thanks to Daniel Ratman and Mariam Hakovan wish you all the best for your business and thanks a lot for being here today with us thank you thank you thank you Sally. thanks a lot for the invite it was a pleasure Thank you very much. And yeah, so I wish you guys have a, a very, very great Sunday. And don't forget the next section is gonna be fundraising. So feel free to join us. Thank you everyone, bye bye. bye, -bye.